I'm going to try and do is do a long exposure, use some light trails, but in the daytime. We're still on the Caja Pass, and I'm not quite sure I'm done with these arches yet. I've decided to give myself a challenge, a challenge that I'm not entirely sure is possible. This stunning road was screaming at me to capture some movement. After all, it carries many people across the border every day. So I decided to try and capture some light trails, even though it's not night time. Is this even possible? I don't know. But what I do know, setting up for this shot, is I'm going to have to think differently again today and try to make the most out of what were flat conditions. Hello and you're very welcome to another episode of my photography vlog and today you join me in a continuation actually of the last episode where I was up on the top of the Caja Pass on the Cork side of the Cork and Kerry border and I did an episode by utilizing my drone to get a different type of photograph and while I was here I said you know what I might as well not waste the condition so I drove along the road it is beautiful to drive but I said you know what I'll try and get a photograph while I'm here as you can see the conditions aren't really the greatest you know, it's pretty much clagged in you know I'm probably looking at around maybe 40 meters above my head is where the the cloud line is but what I'm looking at down here is this road with these arches as I mentioned in the previous episode so if you haven't seen that go back and watch that or stay here and I'll explain to you very quickly what it is is that it's a road that travels from the Cork Kerry border it goes over the top of the Caja mountains they made a blast to make a tunnel on one end and then there's a couple of archways as well that follow down the road and it brings you down into Kenmare. Beautiful part of Ireland, absolutely stunning to look at in nice weather when you can actually see in the distance but visibility actually is quite poor right now. But either which way, I'm here now so I want to try and get a couple of photographs. So what I'm doing here is setting up the camera so I can look down towards the road into the two arches that you see in front of me then there's another arch that's further on down but i can't seem to find the position to get into that will enable me to build that visible clearly to be able to see through that because you can see through the one that's below here i'd have to be up on the hill but then if i'm on the hill that's over here i won't be able to see down because the rocks will block the viewpoint but i think here is a nice point to be able to get i'm only a couple of meters really from the road um, so you might hear some road traffic that's coming by but that's exactly what i want because i want to take a photograph here which is going to be pretty flat right let's be fair there's not going to be anything amazing about the image but with the amount of cars that are coming through some of them have daytime lights on so what i'm going to try and do is do a long exposure use some light trails but in the daytime I'm gonna to have to use some filters to do it. Never done it before. If it works, it'll be amazing. If it doesn't work, at least I've tried anyway, and you can come along with that journey. But I think, you know, if I can get that, it will be a nice photograph to be able to have the red of the brake lights coming down and leading you through the road, which I'm gonna get set up here. I'm gonna wait for a couple of cars and I'm gonna get the settings right. And I'm gonna take it with the wide lens first. And then I'm potentially going to take out the long lens as well to see if I can do something different with that. But for now, anyway, I'll just get set up here and yeah, we'll check back in in a moment. So as you can see on the front of the camera here, I have my Lee Big Stopper actually on. So the idea of putting that on is it enabled me to get a very, very long exposure of 30 seconds. I'm actually having to bump up my ISO because with ISO, you know, it's the sensitivity it is to light. So as you can see, it's quite bright uh, around me here. So. For me to take a photograph with the cars coming down this road 
if ISO is down low, then it won't pick up the actual faint light that we're going to see from the brake lights. I did a test shot there a moment ago. I had ISO at 800, and even at 800, you could just about make out the light, obviously because the big stopper as well is blocking out quite a lot of the light. But if you bump up your ISO, the sensor becomes more sensitive then to the light, and you should be able to pick out the light trail. It's not going to be extremely bright, but they're going to be there anyway within the photograph. And I think what I'm going to do now is just wait and wait for a car to come down the road here. If I get two cars in a row or three cars in a row, fantastic, because I'll have a lot of red lights then as well, which should hopefully increase that, I suppose, within the image. But I'm just going to wait for them and then I'm going to take that shot. I'll be at 30 seconds. My F is around F16 and I'm going to put the ISO, believe it or not, up to a thousand and I'm going to test see how that will actually turn out. It might end up completely grainy. It might end up as an unusable photograph. I don't think so but there's a chance obviously that it might but we'll wait for the cars to come. There's not that many unfortunately but we'll wait for the cars to come and then we'll uh, see if we can get this shot. I think I'm kind of all but given up really on getting a consistent light trail going through. Simply not enough cars and when they're driving down you are getting a faint bit of the light but it's when they hit their brakes which is when the light obviously becomes bright enough. So I am getting a bit of light that's going into the first set of double arches that you see below here. So what I'm actually going to do is swap out the lens, go with the long lens. I'm going to zoom in purely in regards to that. I'm going to have the image frame with the road starting on the bottom, going straight up into the arches, and then hopefully a car will come through there and I'll get a nice glow of the red of their brake lights as they will go through that. So uh, I'll show you what I got anyway here from playing around with this. Like I say, not enough cars. I'd love if I could actually go drive myself. I've done that actually in the past. Um, when I did light trails with the Takina lens. Actually, if you haven't seen that, I'll link to that here, but I'm not really in the mood to go back down again, leave the camera on, drive down there, because I probably have to drive for around about four kilometers before I can turn around again. So I don't really want to go that far just for the shot. But we'll, uh, I'll show you what I, like I say, I'll show you what I got a, sec a second ago, and I'll put on the long lens, and I'll talk to you what I'm gonna do then at that point. <music> switched out the lens now but one thing I will give you a bit of advice in regards to this is when you're using the ND filter so the big stopper which is what I have on right now you will not be able to see anything when you put that onto the front of the lens to enable you to compose your shot take it off compose the shot without any filter then put the filter back on and then you can play with your exposure but at least you know you've got your composition nailed it's getting increasingly hard actually now to be able to get the shot because the cloud as you can see here is coming in around me so I'm kind of being swamped by the cloud but I think think I might have gotten uh, one shot anyway at least with the long lens uh, the ground here actually as well just one I suppose bit of advice the ground here is actually quite unstable so I'm having to set the camera at a 10 second timer because I don't have the cable to connect in my Capture Pro so set the camera at a 10 second timer and then walk behind you in enough time so that there's absolutely no movement. But even at that, one thing to be conscious of is that when you're using the long lens, now thankfully there's no wind here today, but when there is wind, the slightest bit of catching 
of the body of the lens on the wind will actually give you motion in a long uh, exposure. I've also changed out as well to the Lee Little Stopper to enable me to shorten that length of time that I need to expose because with the long lens now obviously I'm zoomed into the scene. But I do think that will be hopefully a nice shot anyway. Either which way it's always good to experiment like I said in the past in my episodes and I think it's something that you know what I probably will end up getting a shot that I'm happy with. Uh, maybe not exactly as how I envisioned the shot but I still think we'll get a, a shot nonetheless. So I'm going to sign out from today's episode. I do hope you enjoyed coming to this stunning area. Believe me, trust me, it is actually stunning if you can normally see what you're looking at. But I'm going to sign out now. Thank you so much for watching. If it's your first time on the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really does mean a lot. Uh, leave me a like, leave me a comment, share with your friends. Just, you know, spread the beauty of Ireland, even in the mist. But until the next time anyway, thank you very much and Shlong Gafol. Drowning